good to see you. Do we have any young people that were at Encounter this week? Kids Fest this week? There are kids, that's okay. All right, we're going to praise God. You ready? Let's go. Your favor waits within the future Cause my dreams are small compared to yours Why should I worry about tomorrow When I know that all I gotta do Is trust you, Lord You ready? Cause every little thing's gonna be alright Hands up Revival Night, and uh, so a big warm welcome to everyone. My name's Peter Toggs. I'm one of the pastors here, and it's an absolute pleasure to have you. Hey, as we continue in our worship, we're going to continue in our worship. We have uh, many people being baptised uh, right now, and so if you're ba- getting baptised, why don't you begin to make your way down to my left, your right over here, and... Uh, It's actually really special. A big warm welcome to families who have come to witness this incredible moment where people are deciding, making a public declaration of an inward change. It's the beautiful thing about baptisms as the stage begins to roll back is there's a water under me here and baptism is significant. In fact, Jesus exemplifies baptism in Himself, was baptised in the waters and it was symbolic that as we go down in the waters and are 
buried, if you like. We buried the old past and we buried our, our mistakes and we buried what has happened and we come up in this new life. And it's actually beautiful for what you guys are doing and a big congratulations to all 20 something of you guys who are deciding to be baptised. And so, so I'm gonna pray for them and then we're gonna continue worshiping. Hey, let's not spectate, let's worship together. You can join in on the screens if you wanna take photos of your friends, that's absolutely fine, you do that. But church, let's keep engaging, let's keep worshiping. Come on, if you're over here being baptized, why don't you lift your hands heavenward if that's you, you're getting baptized over here. Come on, why don't we stretch our hands towards these incredible people. Father, thank you so much. Lord, today we choose God. Lord, people are choosing, Lord, to put You first as they publicly declare, God, who You are. Lord, I thank You so much that they are burying the old and the, 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 the past, Father. And God, as they go down in those waters, may the new life of Jesus come up. In Jesus' Name I pray. And everyone said together, Amen, Amen, Amen. Come on, let's really thank God for what He's doing in the place. Let's keep worshipping, church.
you're working Even when I don't feel that you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you Come never on, that's stop the truth. working Even when I don't see that you're working Even when I don't feel that we you're working God. You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working
begin to call upon the name of Jesus. Come on, say His name, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We are so thankful for who You are. We're so thankful for the price that You paid for us so that sickness would be healed, so that families would be brought back together again, so that You could bring answers to, answers to difficult situations, God. We believe in You, we believe in prayer, and we ask that You would have Your way in Jesus' Name. And everybody said? Okay, I think you can do a little bit better than that. Everybody said? Amen. Welcome to church. It's good to have you here. It is good to have everyone here, and particularly if you're new or visiting. Yes. I hope you feel right at home on this beautiful, let's just call it a summer's day, okay? Absolutely. It's a beautiful summer's day. <laughs> and you made it to church, so give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> We're in for a good night. Revival nights. And these last few revival nights have been nothing short of exactly that. And uh, it's gonna be an amazing night. So, hey, why don't you take a moment, say hello to someone, young people. You've got an Encounter Fest anointing on you. You're gonna get to your seats as quickly as you can. I hope you like who you're sitting next to. Any young people been at Encounter Fest or Encounter Night? You might be sitting next to a young person and there is a certain glow on their face. Uh, it is not the moisturizer they've been using, although that's good. They have an anointing from Encounter Fest. And so thank you to every parent that sent your young people along to Kids Fest and Encounter Fest and Encounter Night. And Absolutely I amazing. A huge thank you to all of our kids leaders, our youth leaders, our pastors, anyone who volunteered this week. Yeah. A praise report is, is we had over 8,000 kids and youth and young people a part of our Kids Fest and Encounter Fest this week, which is just yeah. incredible. Really cool. Yeah. And it's always good to have the mother dove in the house, Pastor Bobby, who is the mother dove. I know you probably, yeah, it's just always good to have you around. We love you. And uh, Pastor Brian is, uh, you should know where your father is. I have no idea. South, South Africa. Africa. Thank you, Drew. See, Drew. South Africa with Rima Church over there, Pastor, yes, Pastor Ray McCauley. Right. And so uh, it's been awesome. So, Can't wait to have him back. Yes, he will be back. <laughs> We're killing this. This is great. You're so good. You're so good. Hey, I think, what are we about to do next? Do you know? Uh, okay. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're about to continue in our worship right now. Beautiful. And uh, we're about to come around our giving. And Paul Kellaway, our Hills Youth Pastor, is about to encourage us. So would you welcome Paul as he comes to encourage us? <laughs> uh, thank you, Togsies. Who loves the Togsies? Well, like they mentioned, we are going to continue in our worship this evening. We're going to come around our tithes and our offerings. And so uh, all the ways are gonna be behind me on the screen so you can start to prepare. But as you do, can I share a thought quickly? Is that cool? I wanna read you a passage of Scripture from Acts 3, 43. It says this, Everyone around was in awe of all the wonders and signs being done through the apostles. And all the believers lived in wonderful harmony, holding everything in common. They sold whatever they owned and pulled their resources so that each person's needs were met. I love this passage of Scripture because it teaches me this, that a real relationship with Jesus accompanied by a genuine connection with the body of Christ results in an overflowing lifestyle of generosity. That when I meet Jesus and I experience His grace for the first time, and I couple that with the Kingdom of God and the house of God and the church, the natural response is generosity. Pastor Brian, at the start of the year, I think it's gonna come up, the faith decree that he spoke over our church. And there's one line that I have not been able to get over this year, and it's this. 
I recognise God's extravagant generosity towards me and I desire to reflect that generosity in all that I do. What I love about this, in, what I love about this moment is this, that it's a reflection of the generosity that we've already experienced in Jesus. That this moment of offering, this moment of bringing our tithes is not about how wonderful we are or how generous we are or how great we can be in this moment. It's a reflection of what Jesus has already done for us. That in this moment, we're not coming to bring what we can to God. We are bringing back to God what was already His. So can I pray for you before we give tonight? And as a church, can we make the choice to reflect the grace and love that we've already been offered through Jesus? Jesus, we thank You so much for what You've done for us. And tonight, God, we wanna reflect the generosity that You've already shown us, God. Lord, we thank You that as we bring what we give to You, God, You do so much more with it than we could ever understand. And Lord, we thank You that this offering, this moment, this tithe sees Your Kingdom extend around the globe. And everybody said, Amen, Amen. Our amazing hosts are gonna come and host us. Uh, and as they do, there is so much coming up in church life. So check out the screens for what is coming up in church. This perfect God, has chosen to reveal grace through imperfect vessels. We are Christian before we are creative. We are lovers of the Lord before we are lovers of art. We are committed to actually seeking first the Kingdom. Confidence is such a gift from God. We're not talking about an arrogant self-confidence, we're talking about a godly confidence. Confident in who you are in Christ. Confident about the call of God on your life. Confident in your ability to do something significant. Yes, well, we are linked right now, right around Australia, into Bali, on the Hillsong Channel. So everyone everywhere, why don't we say hello to those joining us right now? So good, welcome everyone. My name's Peter Laura Toggs, uh, one of the pastors here. So good to have you guys. Is your name Peter Laura Toggs? It's... I just... Wow, wow. <laughs> Peter and Laura Toggs. Although that would be a cool name, Peter Laura Toggs. But uh, hey, so good to have everyone here on our Revival Nights. Laura, we're absolutely blessed tonight. We are. It is that time where we're gonna come around the Word this evening. Um, and we're blessed to have Thomas Hansen all the way from Copenhagen. 
in Denmark. And um, the thing about Thomas is not only uh, him and Kat and the team over there building the fastest growing church in Copenhagen, but so they tell me it's the largest church that Copenhagen has ever seen. And so it's a miracle days that we are a part of as a church, Hillsong Church, and uh, they are family. And uh, not only that, Thomas is a phenomenal speaker. He is a gifted preacher of the Word. And um, it kind of feels like a bit of a throwback for me because when I was a high school student in wildlife, he was my tribal leader. And, um, and so I have very fond memories and we just, you know, green blood, you know. Anyway, why don't you be upstanding? We honour the Word here at Hillsong Church. Let's welcome Thomas Hansen. <laughs> Amazing. Any green tribe here tonight? So good. Hey, can we, uh, can we pray before we sit down? Jesus, we just thank You for the privilege it is of being in Your house tonight. Lord, I pray that we'll never take it for granted when we are in Your presence, under Your Word with Your people, Lord God. We know that there are people all over the world that cannot meet freely like we are tonight. And so I pray that we will never take these moments for granted, but while it's still daytime, that we will do everything we can to bring the Word of the Jesus Christ out as far and wide as possible, Lord God. And I pray that tonight that You would do what only You can do. I pray You will speak through me like I believe You've spoken to me. And Lord, I pray that You will break this message up into thousands of pieces, Lord God, that individually people, they will catch what You have to say to them, Lord God. We thank You that You are a good God and You love every single person in this place. And I pray that when we leave this place tonight, may we leave more in love with You than when we came in. In the Name of Jesus, we pray. And everyone said together, Amen. 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 Well, why don't you give someone a high five or a kiss or a hug or whatever is appropriate before you grab a seat. And can we thank the creative team as well? You guys are phenomenal. I, um, I just have to um, make sure that I don't develop a pregnant brain like Peter uh, up here. But we have had an incredible week at Encounter. Uh, I've, had, uh, I've had the privilege of being in Sydney, Brisbane, Sydney, Brisbane and Sydney. Uh, and the city this morning has just been fantastic what God is doing and I just need to say thank you for the honour of being here this week and even tonight is one of those milestones of grace for me. I remember about eight years ago Pastor Brian saying within six weeks you'll be preaching Sunday night at Hills. Next minute I was on a plane uh, to Copenhagen and so even though you are still six weeks away from your promise, just hold on. The day will come in the name of Jesus. But hey, it's just such an honour. We love you, Bobby. We love Brian. We just love what we get to do for you guys and represent you guys in the room over in Denmark. And just being able to, you know, call this family. And I just want to say thank you to every single one of you for your support, for your prayers, and just for your faithfulness. Just simply by being faithful week in, week out, here on the ground, you're making a difference around the world. So you can give yourself a hand right now. You guys are awesome. Plus, uh, it's, it's amazing being in, in Australia right now because you're actually making uh, headlines in the news in Europe. I don't know if you know this. Uh, last few weeks, this is a true story, last few weeks, there's been several stories of the magpie attacks of the Hills District in Sydney, Australia. I don't know if it's anyone in this room, but in particular, there was one story that was circling around someone in the Hills District who killed a magpie. It made the news uh, in Denmark, and so it's, just not, it's nice to be home and just sharing that with you. Hey, is there anyone that want to confess tonight? Oh, wow, there are actually people that are confessing. Praise God. I wonder if you've ever asked the question, God, where are you? I wonder if you've ever been in a situation or a circumstance that didn't align with your expectation of what it looked like to follow Jesus. And you ask those questions, you ask those words, where is God? 
God, where are you in this moment? I was tucking one of my girls into bed and, you know, we were praying and I was like, you know, good night. And then as I'm leaving the room, she said, hey, Daddy. I said, yeah. She goes, if God is real, why doesn't He just show Himself? And I'm like, listen, it's time to go to sleep, okay? <laughs> and left the room like any good parent. And I wanna speak a message tonight that I've called hide and seek. Hide and seek. I don't know about you, but I think sometimes we can have a picture of following Jesus. It's kind of like, you know, just a walk in the park. We're just skipping along. And if I need a word from God, I can just do a flick and pick in the Bible and find something and hopefully it will encourage me. Hopefully it will be something that can speak into me. I don't know about you, but that's not my experience. My experience of following Jesus seems more to be like a wrestle. <laughs> It seems like when I read the Word, or rather the Word is reading me. Oh, that's a drawing for my daughter that just popped out. That's nice. I didn't even know it was there. There you go. I'm just having a moment, guys. <laughs> it seems like when I'm reading the Word or the Word is reading me, there is a wrestle that is going on. A wrestle between the flesh and the Spirit. A wrestle between the truth of the Word and the realities of my life. And so often I find myself as I'm reading the Bible, I'm finding myself come to this question and saying, God, where are you? Where are you in my friend's life? And where are you in my friend's life that is going through cancer right now? And where are you in this married couple that are going through a divorce? And where are you in this situation? And I don't know about you, but so often we find ourselves just asking God, where are you? I, I, I think back on, on Jesus and His disciples and he, he was with them and He looked at them and He loved them and He told them, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Next minute, He's up in the clouds. <laughs> he looks at them and He goes, hey guys, come follow me. A few days later, where I'm going, you can't follow. <laughs> well, you know, which one is it? <laughs> Can we find you or are you a hidden God? I think as humans, we are so quick to lean to the extreme. We, we are often just find ourselves gravitated towards the extreme point of view. I would suggest to you that extremes are good for explanation, but not application. That extremes, they are good tools to explain something, but you can't live there. That life is lived somewhere in the middle ground. That wisdom is found somewhere in the gray area, in that tension field between the two opposites. And we want life to be either or. We want life to be hot or cold, black or white, off and on. I mean, we want it to be either or. But that's not how life works. I mean, look at Proverbs 24. It says, if you find some honey, eat it. It's good for you. Very next proverb, Proverbs 25. If you find honey, don't eat too much. It's gonna make you sick. Well, which one is it? It's somewhere in between. Even the prophet Isaiah, who had so many face-to-face -face encounters with God, he said in Isaiah 45, 15, he says, truly you are a God who has been hiding Himself. The famous atheist Bertrand Russell, he once said that if he was faced with God when he died, that's a bit of an oxymoron, but whatever, he would demand an explanation of why God made the evidence of His existence so insufficient. You see, to the atheist, a hidden God just proves that He doesn't exist. To the skeptic, it just creates more doubt. To the believer, we kind of don't know what to do with it. So we're like, well, it's all part of God's divine plan. I'll go and ask Lee Burns. You know, <laughs> I think the answer to all of this, it comes down to what type of relationship do you believe God, He desires to have with us. What type of relationship do you believe that God of heaven wants to have with us? You see, if, if you think, well, all God wants is that we intellectually know that He exists, that we can logically uh, you know, ascertain that God, He exists and He is there. I mean, if that's all He wants, then yes, it is preposterous that God doesn't just on the hour, every hour, pop, on, pop up on every screen, every mobile device, that He doesn't just pop through the clouds like a Monty Python God and go, hello, and then disappears again. 
Because if all he wanted was just for us to logically know that he exists, if that's all he was after, then yeah, that's what he should be doing. But if he was after an intimate relationship, if he was after a personal relationship, then he invites us to go deeper. Then he invites us to go looking for him, to peel back the layers and to find him for ourselves, to have a personal, intimate encounter with God. You see, at the core of this is how do you see God? If you see God as this distant, dormant and disinterested God, I mean, there's no point looking for Him because He doesn't want to be found. But that's not the God that we see in the Bible. We don't see a God who is disinterested. We don't see a God who has just started everything and then left humanity alone. No, we see a God who is engaged with His people. Hebrews 11, 6, it says, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to Him must believe, number one, that He exists, and number two, that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. Church, I'll suggest to you tonight that God doesn't hide to be hidden. He hides to be found. God doesn't hide to be hidden. He hides to be found. If you're a parent, um, have you got any parents here tonight? That's not a shame of being a parent. Any parents here tonight? Okay, a few more hands. Amazing. Yes, I've made life. Okay, congratulations. If you're a parent, you understand that the key to hide and seek, now let me rephrase that. If you're a good parent, you understand that the key to hide and seek, it is not to win the game. Okay, write it down, okay, especially if they're younger, okay? So, so our youngest, my wife and I, we've got three girls. That's called a hat trick, by the way. My, my, our youngest, she's five, okay? Now, I could win the game every time. I'm not bragging, that's the truth. You know, I could, I could lock a few doors. I could climb up on the roof. I could go somewhere that you could never find me. And I could sit there and I could hear her little voice, Daddy, Daddy. Where are you, Daddy? And, and I, I would be able to hear the desperation. Daddy? Daddy? I would hear her clawing on doors. Eventually, I would hear her crying. Eventually, it would probably go quiet as she's sitting in a corner, just shaking, feeling abandoned. In that moment, I would spring forth. Suck it, I win. <laughs> it's not really the aim of the game. No, as a, as a good parent... Okay, take notes. As a good parent, we understand we want to be found. So what do we do? We hide in obvious places. We hide behind a lamp. We hide behind a pot plant. And then we hide behind, you know, the couch or a piece of paper. And then, you know, even if our child is a bit slow, you know, then we try and get their attention. We're like... Not that they're a dog, but you know, we try and get their attention. Why? Because we want to see their face. As they're going, Daddy, Daddy, and they're looking through the couch, they're looking through the living room, then they turn around the couch, and then they see you behind the lamp. And they go, there you are, Daddy. I found you, silly Daddy, <laughs> hiding, hiding behind a silly lamp. I found you. And then we go, yeah, you found me. I mean, I made it really hard for you. We do that, hey, I found Jesus. I'm sure God's like, yeah. Yeah. I'm sure God is like, go ahead, write your little date in your Bible. You found me. I made it so difficult. <laughs> How did you find me? If that is how we are as parents, that we want to be found, how much more our God in heaven, He wants to be found by you. He wants to be found by you. He wants to be able to see your face as you finally discover salvation. He wants to see your eyes light up. He wants to see your face light up. He wants to see you come alive as you turn around the corner and go, there you are. 
I found you, Jesus. There you are. He wants to be found by us. So tonight, I wanna invite every single person here today on the greatest game of hide and seek. I wanna invite every single person to join in on a game of hide and seek that will change your life. It will change the way that you see your life. It will change the way that you see church. First of all, you must believe, and this is how we do it. First, you must believe that there is a God that wants to be found. Look, the rules of hide and seek are pretty simple. If you're playing hide and seek though, and no one's hiding, you're not playing hide and seek. You're just a crazy person <laughs> looking bushes and stuff, you know? First, you have to believe that there is a God in heaven who wants to be found. But if you can believe that God, He wants to be found, it will add like this playful element to your relationship with God because you're no longer just gonna come to church on autopilot. You're no longer gonna come to church just unaware. Why? Because you're looking for Him. And the thing about God is He's a living God. That means He's a moving God. That means that where you found Him last week, you might not find Him this week. So you're looking for Him. You show up to church and you go, last week I found Him in worship, but maybe this week for you, He's not hiding in the worship. He's hiding in the MC spot. That, yeah, even tonight, you know. Maybe he's hiding in the, in the preaching. Maybe he's hiding in the altar call. We don't know. So we're gonna go looking for him. Maybe he's hiding in a conversation in the foyer afterwards. We just don't know because he's constantly moving. But my job is to go looking. So I'm looking for where God is. Maybe for some people tonight, you're gonna be on your way home in the car after this and your kid on the back seat is gonna go, mommy, daddy, at Hillsong Kids, they were talking about this and this and this and suddenly it hits you and you go, there you are. I found you, Jesus. You were hiding in this conversation. He is hiding somewhere in your life. And our responsibility is to find Him. Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope in the future. Then you will call on me, you will come and you will pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all of your heart. And then there's the most beautiful promise. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. Even you. So how come we don't find Him? How come it seems difficult? Have you ever noticed that distance distorts reality? That when there's distance in a relationship, that's when we start reading into it. Like if there's distance between you and your boss, imagine right now you got a message from your boss that says, I wanna see you first thing in the morning. Yeah, exactly. Some of you are like, ooh. Others of you are like, oh great, I'm bringing the bagels. <laughs> It all depends on your relationship. When there, is, when there is distance, we start to distort reality. I mean, that's, that's why sometimes you can hear someone talk about Jesus, dare I say, preach about Jesus. And like when they talk about Him, it's like God is an angry God and judgmental and, you know, really looking down upon His people. And you're like, are you preaching from the same? Did you get the same message as I got? Because when I read this, I, I read about a God who's in love with His people, who has dreams and plans and hope for people. And even those who are far away can be drawn back in and no one has been disqualified. And no one is too far away. That is what I read. But when there's distance, we start filling in the blanks. That's when we start doing a spiritual stock take before we get to church. You know, when you walk into church and you start quantifying your relationship with God, you're like, okay, how many times have I prayed this week? How many times have I read my Bible? All right, five out of seven, that's not too bad. And you, you start working your way through because somehow you gotta you know, quantify it so that you can decide whether or not you've been a good or a bad Christian. Where does this language even come from? Good Christian, bad Christian? The Bible doesn't talk about this. The Bible talks about being a follower of Jesus. Listen, if my kids mess up, they don't, but sometimes they do. You know, they take after their mom. But you know, sometimes, 
They definitely don't. Uh, not the only ones. And so anyway, so they, when they mess up, the relationship isn't broken. It's not like, okay, you're not my daughter anymore. You better get that fixed up and then you can come and call me daddy again. No, my children are my children on their best day as much as they're my children on their worst day. The relationship is the same. Legally, emotionally, they are still my daughters. Or we might have to work some stuff out. There might be some consequences, but the relationship is the same. That is the same that goes for you and your relationship with God. He loves you. He cares for you. He has a plan and a purpose for your life. But we start distorting what it means to follow Jesus. So we start using language like, I've walked away from God. As if Jesus is in a time and place. It's like we like, Jesus is over here and He's there. And now I have walked away from Jesus. You know, we use this language and it's like, well, where's Jesus again? It's like, oh, He's over there and I've walked away from Him. C.S. Lewis, he, he describes mercy and grace as the two bloodhounds of heaven. That's cool. You can just picture Jesus sitting there on the throne and someone walking away from God and God just sitting there looking down at mercy and grace, just unleashing them. All right, sick and boys. <laughs> I don't care where your kid or your grandkid is tonight or this weekend. I'm telling you, mercy and grace are chasing Him down. Mercy and grace are barking the promises of God over their life. You might be walking away from God. I'm not sure why I'm making you look like the Grinch, but you might be walking away from God. Let me tell you this tonight. Jesus, He is chasing you down. Jesus, He is following you. He said, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. Listen to me tonight. Jesus is not found in a time and place. Jesus is found in the pursuit of Him means the moment you desire Jesus, that's the moment you find Him. Matter of fact, you can't finish His name. You say, gee, He's right there. Why? Because He's not found in a time and a place. He is found in the pursuit of Him. The moment tonight you lifted your hand, even had the intention of lifting your hands and worshiping Jesus, He was already there. You found Him. He doesn't hide to be hidden. He hides to be found. That's why your direction in life is more important than your position in life. Question is not where you're at tonight. The question is in which direction is your life moving? Are you moving towards Jesus or are you moving away from Jesus? Matthew 6, 33, seek first the Kingdom of God. Seek, it's an active word. You seek it, you keep on seeking. Is your life moving towards Jesus or away from Jesus? Someone once said that evangelism is just one beggar telling another beggar where the bread is. I guess maybe this is part of the purpose of these church gatherings is that when we have our praise reports and we talk to each other about the things of God, what are we really saying? We're starting to declare the praise of God. We say, hey, I found Him. I was playing hide and seek and I found Him. I found Him in my finances. And so, you look, I don't know where He's hiding in your life. All I know is I found Him in my life. And if I could find Him in my life, you can surely find Him in your life. So because I find, found Him, I wanna encourage you to keep looking because He's there somewhere. I found Him in my pain. I found Him in my marriage. I found Him at my job. I have found Jesus and so can you. Hide and seek. You can find Jesus for yourself. So, you know, the primary purpose as followers of Jesus, the primary purpose for us is to find Jesus for ourselves, to worship Him. But our secondary purpose, it is to help others find Jesus as well. Evangelism, if you will, if we can go there for a moment. Is that okay? In Acts chapter 17, we hear of the Apostle Paul. He's walking through the city of Athens. And in the marketplace and the streets, there's all these gods, statues of gods. And there's one to an unknown God. And Paul, he decides to use this as a common ground, a common denominator to talk about the things of God. And so we pick up the story in Acts 17, verse 24. And it says, The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth. He doesn't live in temples built by human hands. 
He doesn't, he's not served by human hands as if He needed anything. Rather, He Himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. From one man, He made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth. Now listen to this church. And He marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of the land so that they would seek Him and perhaps reach out for Him and find Him, even though He is not far from any one, one of us. Now I've got a question, statement, if you will, tonight. And I know that Lee Burns is here, so I'm checking my theology as I'm preaching. What if, what if there was no coincidences? Like, you don't have to go completely quiet. I mean... Like what if there was no coincidences in life? It says that God has decided where you are, when you are. He has marked out times in history, that's your where, and the boundaries of your land. No, the times in history, that's your when, and the boundaries of your land, that is your where. He has marked out where you are, when you are. Why would He, have, why would he do that? So that the people around you would seek Him. And my encouragement tonight, church, is let us not live unaware. Let us live lives with purpose and on purpose. Let's live with open eyes so we can see what God is doing around us. God doesn't hide to be hidden. He hides to be found. Now, we always want the initiative when it comes to evangelism. We always want the initiative to be on someone, on, on God, don't we? We're like, okay, God, if you do this, then I'll do that. You know, has anyone ever prayed that? You're like, you, you really like geeing yourself up. It's like, I really wanna evangelize. I really wanna tell someone about my faith. And so we say, all right, God, if, um, all right, if they trip right now, <laughs> like right here, you know, and they fall, and as they fall, they turn to me and say, how must I be saved? <laughs> I swear, if that happens, God, like, like seriously, I'm so giving them a fly and walking away. <laughs> but that's not really where the initiative lies. Matthew 7, it says, Ask, seek, knock. For everyone who asks, receive. Anyone who seeks, finds. And the one who knocks, the door will be open. Let me ask you this question. If you're knocking a door, who's responsible for that to be open? Is it the one knocking or the one on the other side? It's the one on the other side. M me knocking on the door just lets someone know that I'm there. I'm not responsible for that door to be open. My responsibility is to knock on the door. And I would dare to say that too many of us, we don't share our story. We don't, if you will, evangelize. We don't share our faith because we think we are responsible for the outcome. So we say things like, oh, I'm just not good at it. Like, like, I just don't know how to close it. <laughs> like, I'm just not like that person or I just, I can't do this. Well, Listen, you're not responsible for the outcome. Your responsibility is to knock. That's your responsibility. That's my responsibility. You know, the Bible says one man sows, another one waters, but God causes it to grow. So neither is he who sows or he who waters anything, but God alone is the glory. How have you built a church like this? Well, we kind of just sowed and then watered, and then just like, dear Lord, <laughs> please make it grow. <laughs> That's all we've done. One man sows, another one waters, but God causes it to grow. So tonight, I wanna suggest, can we go on an assignment tonight, church? Can we go and play hide and seek? Can we go and look for, how do we do this? Well, look like Paul, look for the common ground. Look for the, Coincidence, back home in our church, we call them hide and seek moments. Look for the hide and seek moments. Look for something that there is a coincidence. You might walk into a cafe and someone's talking about your favorite football team. 
Well, you can either go, oh, what a coincidence. Or you can go, there you are. I found you. So you hear someone talk about your favourite football team. Now you go over and you're like, oh, I don't know how to evangelise. You're not evangelising. You're talking about your favourite football team. That's all you're doing. So what are you doing? You're just knocking. Now, now it's up to the Holy Spirit to lead that conversation. Sometimes all you get to do is knock and walk away. Other times you get to knock and try and see if you can open the door. You couldn't. Cool. Other times you get to knock and suddenly there is salvation then and there. Other times someone wants to come to church. Other times you start a lifelong friendship. Other times you're just connecting with someone somewhere. Our responsibility is just to knock. I was sitting on a plane once and the guy sat next to me and, and, and he was reading a boat magazine. And so I looked over and I go, nice boat. I don't know anything about boats, all right? I know I'm a Viking, but you know, that's it. And so he goes, isn't it? I go, oh, it is. He goes, isn't it? I go, yeah. And he goes, I live in Monaco. I'm like, oh, you got to have a boat in Monaco. I've never been to Monaco. And he goes, oh, you do? I go, oh, yeah, you do. So we talk about boats for a little while. And he goes, so what do you do? I said, like, I'm a pastor. And you're like, he goes, you know, whatever. It's not something you eat. And I was like, no, it's something else. And we, we bit back and forth. And he goes, where are you from? Uh, Copenhagen. And I was like, oh, cool. And he goes, where do you meet? I was like, oh, in a theater called Bremen Theater. He goes, ah, oh, I knew the guy who built that. Ah, oh, there you are. <laughs> I found you. <laughs> you know what happened? It's none of your business. <laughs> no, but see, that's the issue. We always want to know what happened. Why? Because we think we're responsible for the outcome. But we're not. That's not my responsibility. And that's not your responsibility. Your responsibility is just knocking. I remember one, I woke up one day in Copenhagen. Well, I wake up every day in Copenhagen, but <laughs> this particular day I woke up and, and as I woke up, I was thinking about this, this football player. It, it, like he just dropped in my mind. And I was like, that's weird. So I just prayed for him. And then I opened the news and there he was again. I'm like, do, 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 do. And I'm like, that's cool. And then I went out for dinner that night and we're sitting in this restaurant with one of our, our team and we're sitting, I'm sitting talking about this and I go, hey, this morning and then that happened. And then I read the news and he was there as well. And as we are talking about this, this guy shows up, the, the actual player that I'm talking about. So he goes into the restaurant and I'm like, and there he is. <laughs> And he goes, well, what are you going to do? Well, I said, well, I'm going to go and knock on the door. So I, I go past and he's like in an awkward spot, like, you know, in between, like a whole bunch of people. So I kind of pretended I was going to the toilet. And when I did that five times, people would have thought I was constipated. You know, I'm, I'm back and forth. I'm in the end, I'm like, oh, I'm just going to go and knock on the door. And so I went over. I said, hi, you know, my name is Thomas. I've been praying for you all day. And we start talking. You know what happened? It's none of your business. Seriously, guys. <laughs> Because I'm not responsible for the outcome. That's not on me. I can't save anyone. I can't talk them into heaven. I can't talk them into salvation. That is only the work of the Holy Spirit. My responsibility is to knock. That's my responsibility. It is just to, and it's amazing how many times you will then hear the comment, oh, that's funny. That's funny you're talking about Jesus. I was just thinking the other day. You know, the other day I was just with my astrologist. I'm like, oh, here we go. Let's go. <laughs> you know, the other day I was just, I had the same thought. And then I was watching this. And now you're here. And you just never know. And moment after moment, you find yourself in, ah, oh, I found you. In a moment, we're going to pray for people that are willing to play hide and seek. To commission people and say, hey, let's go looking for the common ground. Let's go looking for people that want to be found by Jesus. But before we do that, we want to give an opportunity that, that if you're here tonight and you've never encountered this Jesus we're talking about, this is your moment. 
The fact is that everything I'm talking about, someone has done and applied for you. <laughs> it's a bit awkward that I'm kind of giving it away that you're here and you're sitting next to them. It's like, what? It's like, you lied. You said we're going to a show. It's like, yeah, you know, stop arguing. Listen, <laughs> you're here tonight for a reason. What's so amazing about church is that it's a place of hope. That as we said before, it doesn't matter where you're at. The question is, where are you going? In which direction is your life moving? Because the beautiful thing about today is that right now, you can make a decision to change the direction of your life. Or, or you gotta outwalk it and you gotta outwork it. And there's things that needs to be done like as you're living this out. But right now you can take the first step. Maybe you've been coming for a while here or in any of the late locations that are linking in. Maybe you've been coming for a while, but you've never really cross the line of faith where you've made a personal decision of saying, Jesus, I want You. Maybe you've been wrestling with it for a while. Maybe you were the person that's looking at the truth of the Word and the realities of your life, thinking that the realities of life are disqualifying the truth of the Word, not realising that God, He wants the truth of the Word to invade the realities of your life. He loves you so much. I don't know what it is that you think disqualifies you. The truth is this though, that when you go to bed tonight, it is possible for you to lay your head on a pillow and experience peace. No matter the storm that's going around you, no matter how many times you cried yourself to sleep, it is possible to experience peace. And it's possible in the morning when you wake up to have a sense of purpose. I'm alive for something bigger than myself. I'm alive for someone bigger than myself. And I'd love to pray for anyone here today that you wanna make this decision Father, to say for the first time, Jesus, I'm Yours. Or maybe tonight just to come home, just to come home. Could I ask everyone just to close your eyes, bow your heads, not to create a religious moment, just to give you a moment of privacy. This is what I'm going to do. I'm gonna to count to three. And when I get to three, I want every single person all over this place, if you wanna say yes to Jesus for the first time, or you're coming back to Him again tonight, when I say three, just to lift your hand high enough and long enough for me to see Him so I know who I'm praying for. You ready? One, don't let this moment slip by. Don't put it off to a moment you're not guaranteed you have. We have right here and right now. Two, I'm not talking to the person next to you. I'm talking to you. Do you know Jesus? I'm not saying go out, become perfect, then come in and then He will love you. He already loves you. We serve a come as you are Saviour and all there's left for you to do is to accept this free gift of salvation. So when I say three, I want every single person who for the first time, or tonight you're coming back, who's saying, Thomas, include me in this prayer. When I say three, just shoot your hand straight up in the air, just high enough and long enough for me to see it. And then we're gonna pray together. Are you ready? On three, three. Just lift your hands all over this place. Just lift them up, lift them up, lift them up, lift them up in every section, all the way up the top, all the way around the place. Just keep lifting them, keep lifting them, keep lifting them, saying this is it. Tonight's the night, tonight is the night I find Jesus. Tonight is the night, every other location, keep lifting your hands. This is not about a hand in the air that's gonna save you. No, the Bible says confess with your mouth and what you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. And in that moment, you find forgiveness from your past and a purpose for today and a hope for the future. Anyone else, just lift your hands all over this place. Fantastic, fantastic, amazing, amazing, all the way up. Amazing, you can put your hands down. This is what we're going to do. We're gonna say a prayer right now. And I'm gonna ask everyone to pray this together, but, but especially those of you who lifted your hand or you didn't, but you know you should have. Come on, can we just close our eyes one more time and just say after me, say, Dear Jesus, I'm sorry for my mistakes and my sin, but tonight I choose You. I make You my Lord and Saviour. From tonight, I'm a follower of Jesus. I am forgiven and I am free. In the Name of Jesus, Amen, Amen. Come on, can we congratulate? Come on, can we really lift up some celebration? In a moment when we dismiss the service, on the way out, you will see so many of our volunteers 
just at these Bible pickup points and here and in every one of our locations, just holding a New Testament Bible. It's just a magazine format version of the Bible, really easy to approach and read. And we just wanna encourage you as your first step. Why don't you grab this and why don't you just write today's date in it going, this is when I found Jesus. I'm sure God's like, yeah, yeah, well done. And just grab this and I wanna encourage you just every day, just make a decision, just read a little bit. What are you doing? You're looking for two things when you read the Bible. You're looking for Jesus and you're looking for yourself. What does this say about Jesus? And what does this say about us? Just start to read it every single day. Just make a habit of it. A lot of us, we are in connect groups where we gather around the Word and actually try and make sense of it. And you could join one of those. You can talk to the connection stand. And something we encourage the, the new Christians in our church back in Denmark is just to say to them, why don't you make a decision next four weeks just to be in church every week? Just every, every week, next four weeks, just make a decision to set a trajectory in your life that this is what my life is about. Amen? Amen. Can we stand to our feet? Let me just pray for one more group and I'm gonna hand it over to Pastor Bobby. All right, guys. We wanna pray for anyone here who wants to play hide and seek. Meaning that we are saying tonight, I am gonna look for coincidences. I'm gonna look for common ground. And I'm making a decision that next time I see a coincidence, next time, be it at work, in a cafe, in a restaurant, at a park, wherever, next time there is a coincidence. I might be out on a holiday and I hear someone speak with an Australian accent. I go, hey, <laughs> whatever it is, I'm making a decision. I'm playing hide and seek. I'm, my responsibility is not to close it. My responsibility is just to knock, just to go and start a conversation. And we're gonna trust the Holy Spirit with the direction of that conversation. If you're saying today, I'm in, I wanna play hide and sing. I'm in, I'm gonna look for the coincidence. If that's you, can you lift your hands all over this place? Wow. And on behalf of the thousands of people that are gonna experience Jesus because of this decision, thank you. Jesus, we thank You for every single hand that is raised. And Lord, our hands are raised and we're saying, Lord, if You can use anyone, then use us, Lord God. If we can play a small part in someone else's salvation story, then Lord, we don't want our insecurities to hold us back. So Lord, now we thank You that You have not given us a spirit of fear, but one of love and one of power and one of sound mind, Lord God. Lord, we pray now, may You open up our eyes, may You open up our ears, and most importantly, may You open up our hearts. Lord, may we see the people around us, Lord God. May we hear the people around us, Lord God. And we pray that this decision right now, it will result in thousands upon thousands upon thousands thousands of salvations, Lord God, of encounters with Jesus. We thank You that salvation will invade our school. Salvation will invade our workplaces. Salvation will invade our families. Salvation will invade our lives. We give You all the glory and all the praise for what You are doing. In the Name of Jesus, we pray. And everyone shout it. Amen. Sorry, you were building up for something amazing then, weren't you? But you know what? I just want us, I just want to take a moment and um, I actually feel compelled to do this. And if you know me, you know I don't do this very often. But firstly, Thomas, where are you? Sweetheart, that was amazing. Can we just put our hands together and thank him? And I believe that that your word, I believe revival tonight has been a revival night and there's been revival in the word. And if we take that Word on board and if we allow that to resonate within and stir the measure and the gift within, then we're gonna see revival. You're gonna experience it in your own heart going forward this week and there's gonna be fruit to bear. And um, I just wanna encourage you, I'm calling them a sweetheart because they're all like my sons. I wanna encourage you. And uh, I think we get to see you, Brian and I get to see you. Um, I was gonna say sometimes often, but it's not often, but we see you in Europe and we get up there into that European landscape. And um, every time I see you, I pretty much say, did you just get taller? Did you just grow overnight? You're a tall person, you've got stature. 
And I really believe that that stature is in Christ. And I believe that stature is gonna increase. Your stature, not just your physical presence, because you don't wanna get any taller, you're a tall man. But your stature in God is growing. And it's got the kiss of heaven upon it, you and Kat. And you're in the perfect timing of God in that part of the world. And I wanna encourage you to stay humble. You are humble. To stay hungry, to stay on your knees. And let that stature grow because that stature, God's gonna use it in a powerful way. In that part of the world that is not familiar with the presence of God and not familiar with truth. God's doing amazing things in all of our um, locations around the world. You know, they're reproducing after their kind. I don't know if you realise that, church. People say, how is it possible that Hillsong expands like it does? Not only here in Australia, in this part of the world, but just around the world. It's because the rooms are coming of age. They're coming of age and they're reproducing after their kind and I can barely keep up with it. <laughs> it's like the Egyptian, what was it? The, the Hebrew women were birthing so quickly they couldn't keep up. And the devil can't keep up with it. That's why there's opposition around. But um, I think a lot of our leads are being fired and tested and putting through the furnace to refine them in, in a beautiful way. And uh, we should be praying for all of these young men and women around the world in our own place, in our own land. And you know, God is doing amazing things in Europe. You're right, God is doing amazing things in Sydney. God is doing amazing things in Australia. And revival has been prophesied over this land, great revival. And we're in revival, but we're gonna see greater revival in Jesus' Name, amen. So I'm grateful for the Word of God from you tonight, amen. Father, in Jesus' Name, we continue to pray for them. We pray for Kat and Thomas, Father God, the team up there, what You're doing, that You'll continue to overshadow and protect them. In fact, Father, as a church, we pray for all of our European churches, Father. Lord, they're in an anti-Christ environment. And so, Father God, overshadow them, protect them, watch over them, Father God, and lead them strong, I pray in the Name of Jesus. And everyone said? Amen. You're an awesome church. Peter, come up here and do what we need to do. I love your church. You can have a great week. Thank you, Pastor Bobby. Come on, one more time. Let's thank Thomas for that amazing message. Phenomenal. Hey, I, I want to say uh, thanks for being in church tonight. And I uh, really believe in that. What happens tonight doesn't just stay here, but it gets into our communities and our high schools, as Thomas beautifully said. But thanks for being in church tonight. I'm gonna pray for you. And uh, then uh, the Roosters are gonna defeat uh, the Raiders. No one cares because it's not Parramatta Eels, okay? Right? Who actually cares about the football? Like you actually care? Wow, look, that's interesting. Let me pray for you and then we're gonna send you out with a song of praise and hang around at church. In fact, I mean, there's only three people that actually care about the football. So hang around, there's stuff going on outside. There's food, if you're a young adult, we've got things going on for you. There's a beautiful cafe here. Hang around, it's daylight savings, the sun. It's, it's pretty much midday still, the sun's still out. So hang around, have a meal, connect with someone, ask someone out on a date. Oh my goodness. This is the night to do it. Remember, keep knocking. Let me pray for you, Lord. Thank you so much, Lord, for the church that gathered today. God bless your people, cause your face to shine upon them. We thank you that this week will be a week of victory. Lord, it will be a week of knocking. God, a will be a week. God, where You go before us, You protect us, You provide for us. Thank You, Lord, that You love Your people. In Jesus' Name I pray, Amen. Hey, one more thing, one more thing I forgot. Next week, next week, starting next Sunday, uh, the service, summer service times are coming in. Epicentre. Okay, that's nice. That, that's great. That's great. Uh, six feet in there. Uh, hey, the 4.30 service over at the Epicenter is going to 5 p.m. And the 5.30 is going to... We'll see you next week. Love you, church. Well, come on. You guys ready to go out with a bit of praise? Come on, come down the front. Let's go. Hands up. This is
Be blessed.